Have you always wanted to own your own business by becoming a licensed cosmetologist? If so, now is the time to enroll at Unlimited Cosmetology School, LLC, located at 102 Broad Street in Hattiesburg. That's right, learn how to become a professional cosmetologist by acquiring 1,500 clock hours in 12 or 16 months. Now is the time for open enrollment. If you're interested, contact Lisa Daniels by calling 601-336-7256 or 601-408-2650. Willie Sims CPA is a full-service firm offering small business accounting, bookkeeping, payroll, tax preparation, and more. Our dependable and experienced staff has developed a reputation for professional excellence. Service at its best, service you can depend on. Good morning, and thank you so much for joining us today on Lifting You Higher TV Ministries. Just such a blessing to come before you this morning, giving thanks to God for all that he has done for me. I know if you're watching this program, you have something to be thankful for because you are still in the land of the living. And as long as you're alive and you have breath and you can talk, you ought to give God some praise this morning. I'm calling this a day of praise. In fact, what I'm going to talk about today is don't lose your praise. Don't lose your praise. You know, we lose a lot of things in life and we look back and we say, I hate I lost this and I hate I lost that. But if you can just hold on to your praise through everything else you go through, you're going to make it in this life. I'm going to start off this morning with the scripture that I'm familiar with. And most of you are too, if you read the word and it's found in Psalms 103. And this is what David is saying. I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Bless the Lord. O my soul and forget not all his benefits who forgiveth all thine iniquities who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies thy mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Praise God. If you want to be renewed today, you ought to get up and bless the Lord. If you want to be made whole today, you ought to get up from where you are to now. Lift your hands toward heaven and say, Lord, I thank you. Because there's something about praise that releases you from the bondage and the shackles that the enemy put you in. You see, you can be in bondage in your own household. You can be in shackles and chains on your job, at your house, in your community. But God came to set the captives free. When when Paul and Silas were in jail, they were in shackles. But they they chose to praise the Lord and those shackles had to fall off of them. And when you begin to praise God, your shackles are going to fall off of you. Those chains are going to fall. You are going to be set free. There's no need to say you are Christian and you stay in bondage all of the time. If you love God and you are saved and filled with his spirit and he lives on the inside of you, you should be set free. And what I like about it, sometimes people try to set you free. We try to get set free through things and situations and jobs and position. But the word said, those whom the Lord set free, they are free indeed. If you want to be set free indeed, you need to start praising the Lord today. Now, let's go back to my subject. Where does the word praise come from and what does it mean? It's a Hebrew word and it's the, uh, the meaning of it. The Hebrew meaning is Tuda, which comes from the principal root word of Yada. And this means an extension of the hands in adoration and acceptance and praise to God. It is used for thanking God for things not yet received as well as things that are at hand. But you know what? I was driving the other morning and I said, God, I I had to go a long distance. And I said, all the way, the way I'm going, I just want to praise you this morning. While I was praising God, this is what he told me. He said, Whatever you do, don't lose your hallelujah. I say, God, I thank you. I said, and then I I, I told Sarah, I said, Sarah, look, I said, what does hallelujah mean? You know, we use our iPhones for everything. And it said, it's the highest praise. So I put praise in two categories. One category is a thank you, Jesus praise. Lord, I thank you for what you've already done. And I thank you for what you're going to do. 
but I put the other one into a hallelujah praise. God, I thank you for what you've already done. I thank you for what you're doing right now. I thank you for what you're going to do for me in the future. And Lord, I thank you that this thing that I'm going through, you are going to bring me out of it. So I'm going to praise you right now for the outcome even before I see it. That's a hallelujah praise. We need some hallelujah praise. We need to stop looking at circumstances and say, God, in spite of what I'm going through, God, my heart is broken. I may have lost my job. I might not have money to pay my bills with. I might not be able to get up out of the bed, but I'm just going to stay right here on the bed and tell you, thank you, God. Uh I'm going to thank you in spite of, not because of, but in spite of. If you're going through something this morning and you don't know how you're going to come out of it in spite of what you're going through, just tell him, thank you. I told someone before the show started this morning, when I was younger, I didn't understand the value of praise. Praise has value. And my mother was a praiser and we used to be meeting together. We had little prayer groups that we used to meet uh, on Tuesday nights at houses. I don't know if you all are familiar with that. And there would be these old ladies there and they'd have on their white dresses and they'd have circle meetings and they'd have the scripture read and they'd expound on the word and then they'd have a praise and worship. And my mother would say, Hannah, why don't you praise the Lord? And I said, for what? Because I didn't understand, I was worried and concerned about what I was going through, but she knew that if I praised the Lord, he was going to bring me out. And now I understand because when I'm going through and I don't know what I'm going to do, I just lift my hands and I said, Lord, I thank you. If you can praise God when tears are coming down your cheeks, when people don't understand you, then God honors that praise. That's a sacrifice of praise. Give thanks in everything. That's what Paul said. First of all, we should praise God because he saved us. Because our names are written in the Lamb's book of life. The next reason why we need to praise him is because of the many blessings that come along with being saved. All of his benefits. There are so many benefits we have. And when we begin to praise the Lord, he will release those benefits and let us enjoy those things. Psalm 6, 8, 19, the Bible talks about how we should bless the Lord because he daily loads us with benefits. Every morning when you get up, he loads you with a benefit. Every day when you go out, God protects you. He, 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 he loves you. He, he looks out for you. He meets your need. There is nothing that we can't have from the Lord when we praise him for what we already have. Amen. Sometimes we're begging him, God, give me this and give me that. He said, what are you going to do with what I've already given you? Mm-hmm. Can't you thank me? Can't you see what I've already done? When you begin to thank me for what I've already done, I'm going to open some doors that no man can close. And I'm going to close some doors that no man can open because I know your needs. I knew what you needed even before you asked me. But stop being so greedy and complaining. Don't be stingy with your praise. You see, I can go to church. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. I might not have an offering in my hand, but I can always bring a sacrifice of praise. I want to go into that for just a little bit. You see, when the people were, was up on Mount Nebo, I think it was, and they were praising and, uh, and they were bringing bulls and lamb offerings and they were trying to praise something that the presence of the Lord had left and, 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 and they were trying to praise him, but there was nothing there. But when Jesus died on the cross, And look what David did. David got the covenant and David took the covenant down. And when David took the covenant down, it it was in a little room. It was in a little shack and it was not a beautiful place. It was not a lot of plush, but the presence of the Lord was there. Uh And where the presence of the Lord is, it doesn't matter about how it looks or how it feels. When the presence is there, you can get the praise going and God will begin to give you the answer to your problem. And so David began to praise the Lord. And David was a praiser. There is nobody else in the Bible who praised God like David did. You know, I want to I want to go into that for just a little bit. You know, David won the battle and then Saul said, I'm going to give you my daughter for your wife. And he gave David, David, I think her name was Michael. Is that right? Mm -hmm. 
And Micah loved David, but Saul got jealous of David because David won the war and David was a popular man. People started giving him more praise than they did him. But David kept on praising the Lord. And so what happened is he was out to kill David. So Micah hid David. And when they came to get David, she put something in the bed that looks, looked like David, and it was something that was a replica of him. But David got on the run. And when he ran, David was still running and praising the Lord. Yes, and then when David didn't come back, the woman waited weeks, said she waited days and weeks and months and years, and he never came back. And when he came back, he had married Abigail. And Micah became bitter because what she liked about David when she married him uh, was about his praising and his dancing and all. But he came back acting like a crazy man. He was praising God so much. David praised his kingly robe off of him. And then the very thing, she became bitter. Let me tell you something. If you don't watch it and you don't stay close to the Lord and, and if you don't do what God tell you to do and you get into your flesh and yourself, you will become bitter. But she, and so David continued to praise the Lord. So don't let your problems that you are going through make you become bitter. You keep on praising the Lord. Now, I don't want to get way off into this, but let me tell you something about David. When David sinned, David was quick to repent. He said in Psalm 51, what? Have mercy upon me, O Lord, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies. And then when David got through repenting, he went right back to praising God. And that's a good example for us today. When we're going through things and we don't understand how we're going to come out of things and God brings us out and he forgives us, he justifies us just as if we've never done it. We ought to come out with a shout and a praise. Some of you all are saying, I go to church, but you know, I don't talk much. I'm an introvert. I'm a quiet person. Well, baby, you better learn how to open up your mouth and tell God, thank you. You better learn how to praise him. You see, I, nobody else can praise him for me. I got to praise him for myself. I can't look over here at you and say, well, I'm not going to praise him today because I'm sitting by you and, and you are not a praiser. Uh-uh. When I think about what God has brought me through, what he's done for me, I owe him a praise. That's the least that I can do is tell God, thank you. And you know what? Sometimes when other people are not praising him and you start praising him, it'll catch on fire and they'll start praising him. If God has put a praise on your lips and a praise in your heart, I would advise you to start praising the Lord. You see, when you praise the Lord, the presence of the Lord comes in. He'll go into a hospital room and he'll heal your body. He'll go into the cancer ward and he'll raise you up. He will, you can praise God in your car and you can feel his presence. Sometimes when I'm driving, I just start off with a thank you, Jesus, or praise your Lord. And before I know it, you know what? I'm just all into praise and it looks like a burden begins to lift. When you praise God, burdens begin to lift from you. You stop looking at circumstances and situations and you start looking at God and you start praising him and things will begin to happen for you. Whatever you do, whatever you're going through, whatever you've been through, don't ever lose your praise. I believe David had a revelation of who God was before Jesus died on the cross. Because you think about it, when he brought the covenant down to where it was and he began to tell the people, look, Y'all been bringing bulls and lambs and y'all been bringing wave offerings and, and drink offerings and food offerings, but I found a better way. And the way that I found is that I can bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be on in my mouth. He said, I found a way that I'll give God thanks in spite of everything. And he said, you don't have to wait until you go out there. You don't have to go out there and kill a lamb or kill a bull. You just praise God for who he is. And that's the way it is with us. When we begin to praise him for who he is, you don't always understand God. God will tell you to do something. You'll be broken. He'll tell you to go start a business. You'll be sick and he'll tell you to go pray for somebody else. You'll be going through and God will say, there's somebody else you need to go over there and pray for. And when you do that, you are pleasing God. And that's one way of praising God is walking in obedience. I can talk all day long and I don't obey God. What good is it? Uh -huh. 
He said obedience is better than what? Sacrifice. It's time for saints to stop trying to make sacrifices and start obeying God. He wants your money. He wants your time. He wants you to work as a greeter and as an usher. He wants you to preach the word, but he wants you to obey him. Amen. He wants you to love him. He wants you to honor him. And most of all, this message today is for you. He wants you to praise him. Got to take a break. Be right back. Don't go away. Hannah is available for ministry and speaking engagements for conferences, revivals, and other church events. She is also available for graduation ceremonies and Black History Month events. Email Hannah Hopkins at AOL.com or call 601-296-7693. You can also become a partner or sponsor of the show. Make your donation by logging on to Hannah Hopkins at AOL.com or sending your donation to P.O. Box 17405, Hattiesburg, Mississippi 39404. glad that you joined me today and I thank God that I have a live audience today. Audience, give God a praise right now. <laughs> you know, it's so much easier when I'm ministering, when I have some people, some live folk in here, rather than just having a dead camera. <laughs> but, uh, but we're talking today about not losing your praise. I, I just thank God for my praise. I thank God that there are some things that I went through, I had to praise my way out of them. There are some things that you might be going through right now, and this is not a prophetic word. This is just a word. I believe if you praise God, you can come out of those things that you're in right now. Because you know what? You've prayed, you've fasted, you believe, you've confessed. So now it's time for you to get your praise going. Because there's power in praise. Let me tell you something. When you begin to praise the Lord, I believe our angels in heaven hear your praise. I believe that there is a hallelujah going on in heaven right now. I believe when we get to heaven, we're not going to ever stop praising him. So you may as well start praising him now so you'll be used to it when you get there. And if you don't praise him now, you might not make it there. So you need to start praising him right now for what he's already done. You see, I preached a word the other night and he said in his word, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. He said to leave means to walk away from. I'll never walk away from you and let you go through what you're going through by yourself. I'll either go ahead of you or I'll walk beside you, but I know what you're going through, so I'm not going to leave you alone. Uh -huh. I'll never forsake you. Forsake means to just leave me by myself. He said, no, I'm either walking with you, I'm going ahead of you, or I'm going to carry you in my hand. Right. So you know what? You don't have anything to lose when you praise the Lord. Now, Amen. some people might ask, how did David continue to praise God after he had sinned? You see people coming to church and you say they live in all kind of life and they coming in here praising the Lord. They have a reason to praise the Lord because God didn't take them in their sin. God could have taken them while they were in their sin, but because they are still alive and they are able to praise God, they have a reason to praise the Lord. The truth is if a person sins, they have to understand that if they keep coming to church, getting with other believers, if they keep praising the Lord and reading the word, God's going to bring them out of anything that they're in. That's why we can't judge folk because God can take anybody and do anything. If he took Rahab, the prostitute, and made her a part of his lifeline, how what much more can he do for you and for me? There is power when you serve God. Some people don't know to do right because not everybody was brought up in a Christian home. That's why we are his disciples. It is our responsibility to tell people how to get saved, how to live right, how to live holy. You can't do something you don't know. So instead of us judging folk, let's start praying for folk, talking to people, telling them that God loves them. We got to show them love. And that's what discipleship is all about. Amen. We have all been called to the ministry of reconciliation, yeah. reconciling people back to Christ. If there was ever a time we needed to get out there and witness, we need to do it right now. You know, I can praise God in church, but what I'm going to do when I go to my job? You know, sometimes we have a secret praise. 
I praise him when I'm at home, but when I get around these folk, I can't praise him. I'm not going to tell you to go home, go to, church, go to work and lift your hands up and lose your job. That's not what I'm saying. You just, every time you get a chance, stick in a word about Jesus Christ. Uh -huh. Lord, I got a headache. Honey, can I lay my hands on your head and pray for you? I'm going through some things. Let's go over here in the closet and let's pray because God can bring you out. That's what I'm learning to do. When people ask me to pray for them, I don't say I'll do it later. I do it right then. Yeah, yeah. Folk are hungry. People are thirsty. Folk are yeah, going through. Yeah. They need somebody to say, honey, I'm going to stand with you. I'm going to pray with you and believe with you until you come out of this thing. Mm -hmm. You got to learn how to yeah. praise God by doing what he tells you to do. God has mercy and he has grace for us. And that's another thing we ought to praise God for his mercy and for his grace. Don't stop praising God when you are in the midst of a bout, when you come out of a bout, what, whatever you're going through. You know what? That's a good time when you're in a battle for you to praise the Lord, because when you are in that battle and people see you praising the Lord. I remember one time my sister went to the doctor and she had a cyst in her back. And she had prayed and she had fasted and she had asked the Lord to heal her. So when she gets to the doctor, the doctor looks at it and he said, oh, I don't know. This might be a cancer. She said, Lord, I thank you. He said, what? He thought this crazy woman. But she was thanking God because God had already told her yeah. that he had healed her. Yeah. And she offered up a praise to God. Five minutes later, he looks at it. He Ooh. said, it's not cancer. It's just a cyst. Yeah, because she chose to praise God before she got the answer. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you got to praise him before you get the answer. One tactic that the enemy uses against God's people. You see, he knows we're not going to go back out there and do the things we used to do. I mean, I, I didn't do a lot of bad things. I was not wild, but there were some things that I had under my belt that I needed to get rid of. I used to could sit up all night long and, and listen to, to if loving you is wrong, I don't want to do right. <laughs> I used to could listen to Isaac Hayes saying, I, I stand accused of loving you too much. Loving who? I used to could listen to, I'm not going to keep going because y'all going to think I'm still into it. But it was a song, it's a rainy night in Georgia, and I got a feeling it's raining all over the world. I, 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 I needed to get rid of that. But when God came into my life, and he filled me with his spirit. I don't have a desire to do that anymore. I'd rather listen to uh, something that is more powerful that can help me make it through. We win. I like to hear that song. And there are so many other gospel songs that I like to hear. Now, don't say that I'm, I'm, I'm so sanctimonious that I say you can't listen to that music. I can't. You might can, but I can't because I know what it does to my, my inner man. Yeah, I know what it does to me. And I'm not going back into something that God brought me out of to get put back in, in bondage again. There's never an excuse for not praising God. You don't go by feelings, but you go by obey the obedience to God. You know, when David couldn't get back into the temple to praise God, and because I think Saul had closed the temple doors and he had killed many of the priests, and David still praised God. David went out and he got him an ephod and, yeah. and he began and reminded him of God. He said, I'm just going to take this and I'm going to praise God using it. I'm not going to let a place stop me from praising God. I'm not going to let people stop me from praising God. I'm not going to let Saul stop me from praising God because he's trying to kill me. I'm going to still give God some praise. He kept on praising God. See, it's not where you worship, it's how you worship. Amen. It's who you worship. David knew if he could get God's, in God's presence, everything was going to be all right. Sometimes when we're going through, all we need to do is get in his presence. But we have to press our way into his presence. You got to shut off all this other stuff that's going through your mind. You got to forget about all your problems. And you got to meditate on the word of God. Meditate on the promises of God. Meditate on the blood of Jesus. The price that he paid for your sin. How much he loves you. If God loved you enough to give his son, and his son loved you enough to give his life, what more could he do? Praise God. That's enough to praise him for if you didn't do anything else for you. There's something about praise that brings encouragement. 
When you bring, when you bring your praise to God, even in the midst of trouble, problems, hurt, situations, everything automatically leaves you when you bring your, 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 your problems to God and you begin to praise God. You know, shackles will hold you down. Bondage, bondages will hold you down. But you don't have to stay in those bondages and you don't have to stay in those shackles. I see people walking around with their heads, holding their heads down. Lord, I don't know how I'm going to make it. I don't know what's going to come out of this. Well, why don't you just praise God and see what God is going to do? You'll never know what he's going to do until you praise him. So maybe that's what's holding your blessing up. You're not praising him. And don't compare yourself to somebody else just because you see someone else doing well and look like their prayers are being answered and look like yours are not. God hadn't forgotten about you. Has your name written in the palm of his hand. He loves you so much until when you cry and you go through, he feels your infirmity. We don't serve a God who cannot feel our infirmity. If you have a praise to give God, you ought to give it to him. I believe that until we begin to understand the essence of praise, we're not going to get to that level in Christ that we're supposed to get to. I don't care what kind of church you go to. I don't care where you live. I don't care who you are. You ought to be willing to praise God. You ought to care more about God than you do about people. Amen. You ought to be willing to say, God, I'm going to trust you. They might not understand me. They might think that I'm, I'm wacko, but I'm still going to praise you. They might say that there's something wrong with me, that I'm not normal, but it's okay to be abnormal for Christ. Because sometimes you got to lose his natural mind and take on the mind of Christ in order for God to bless you the way he want to bless you. Hallelujah. Thank God. I thank God today that there is power in praise. You know, I believe that when David was going through, when he was out there in the sheep field, when he was feeding his father's flock, I believe David was praising God out there. Mm -hmm. Because he didn't wait until it was time for him to go and fight Goliath to get the power that he had. If he had waited till then, it would have been too late. But because of David's praise he had, God had given him a plan. Your praise will give you a plan. Yes, it will. Your praise will make you understand things that in the natural you don't understand. Praise is like a sweet voice to God. It's lovely to your soul. It is your life song. It's your heartbeat. It's your joy. It's your happiness. It's your peace. All of it is wrapped up in praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalms 104 say, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and to his course with praise. Open the gates of blessing. Praise is the way to get your prayers answered. If you have a prayer request this morning, in fact, if you're watching this program and you're not saved, I want you to call the prayer line. It's a good time for folks to get saved. Amen. It's a good time for you to say, I heard you talking about praising God, but I don't praise him because I don't know him. Well, you can get to know him this morning. And when you get to know him, then you will have a reason to praise him. This is a good time. Call the prayer line and let us pray with you. And this is the beginning of a new journey that God is going to put you on. And I promise you, you'll never be the same again. I'm not going to stand here and say you're not going to have trials. You're not going to go through things. You're not going to have tribulations. But if you just trust God enough, to say, Lord, save my soul. When I die, I want to go where they singing a hallelujah song. Mm -hmm. If you do that, God is going to come in and he's going to sup with you. He's going to save you. He's going to deliver you. He's going to set you free. And you might be sick in your body. God said, I'll heal your body. And time is up. It went fast this morning. I got to go. Until this time next week, I'm Hannah Hopkins with Lifting You High, your TV minister saying, you be blessed.